Welcome back everyone, in this episode we're going to add sensors so that this doesn't have to happen again. For our car we use a total of 5 sensors. The first sensor, the most important one, is the center one. It's shooting right out the center of the front of our car. Then we have two sensors next to it and they're also pointing straight away from the car. Then we also got two angled ones, those are from the same point of the side but those are rotated outwards. So with all those sensors we can determine where an object is and where the car needs to go to. In this episode we will set up the sensors and in the next episode we will make them work. So let's attach the sensors to a car. I've removed all cars but one and disabled the main camera and attached a new camera to our car. So the camera will follow the car. Go to the imaginary car and open up your car engine script. As you can see we already have a lot of variables and this also gets messy in the inspector. So the thing we want to so the thing we can do is add a header bar. To do this, the only thing you have to do is write the square brackets and write header and then you give it a name. In our case, we will write sensors. I will show you how this looks in the inspector in a bit. First, we add some variables. The first one will be a public float sensor length. And we default this to say 5. This all depends on your car, but I'm just showing my variables. Uh, let's save this script first and see how it looks. So here you can see the header bar. It, uh, it's just a title, nothing more than that, but it keeps it more clear. And here you can see our variable. Now we're going to create a new function for the sensors. We write it at the fixed update and then on top of it. So first we want to check everything and then decide what to do. Uh, just call it sensors or something like that. And then just beneath that we make the function. And this will be a private void. All of our sensors are raycasts. And every raycast has a starting point and a direction. The length is determined by the sensor length. So the thing you want to know is the starting point and the direction. To determine the starting point, we take the transform position of a car, so the center of a car, and then we add some number to the Z position. So the starting point will be something here. I think it will be more clear in the script, so just write it down. Since every sensor is a raycast, we want to create a raycast hit. And just call it hit as always. Also, we want to have a factor 3 for the sensor starting position sensor starting pos or write it shorter sensor start pos and we set that we default this at the transform position so we do this and then we need to add the half of a car so actually we need to calculate how far the distance is from the center to our front of the car in my case it will be around 0.5 so let's quickly make a variable for that. This will be a public float front sensor position. And we do for this at 0.5. Then we add this variable to our Z position of our sensor. So plus equals our front sensor position. So now we have the starting position of the vector. And we can also make the raycast right now. So first we do it for the center for the center sensor. So if physics dot raycast with the starting position of the sensor starting position and then we use the transform dot forward of our car. We output this in our hit, so out hit, and then for the length of the sensor, we will be using the sensor length. This is the base for all the sensors. And to see our sensor, we make a debug line, so debug dot line, uh, draw line, and here we need to add a start position and end position. So the start position will just be our sensor start position. 
and the end position will be the hit hit that point so the point where the raycast hit something save this and let's see if this is working so if the car is in range of something we should be able to see the line and indeed we are seeing the line maybe five foot length is too big so let's make that three so don't forget to do it in the inspector also because otherwise it doesn't get changed and also change it here sensor length will be three so now that we have the center one we can add the two at the side so we just take this position and then add half of the car's width to the x position also make a variable for this and this one will be a public float side sensor position and let's default this at maybe 0.2 I'm not sure but we can always change this then at our sensors function we copy this line and just add it and to make everything clear we just add a comment here that this is our front center sensor and at this one we write front front right sensor and we just use the sensor start position and that and that and then add our new variable to this to the x position so plus equals our side sensor position actually let's rename this to front side sensor to make things clear renaming in visual studio is by control tapping r so control R, control R. And then you can rename this variable and it will change it everywhere. So let's say front side sensor position. And as you can see, it also changed it up here. Otherwise you, do, otherwise you have to do it manually. So then we copy this whole thing again and paste it here. And then we do the left. And now we need to subtract two times this uh, position because we are at the right side of it. So we subtract two times our variable. Because we added it once and now we need to subtract it twice to go here. First let's drag the car towards our block and then our maximum motor torque we set it to zero so the car isn't accelerating it's easier to debug then go back to your scene and as you can see we have three raycasts now uh, but they're too close to each other so the thing we do is just increase our front sensor position our front side sensor position and it should be around 0 0.3 for this car so 0 0.3 now we have that right. The next sensors will be the angled sensors. They have the same starting point as we just had, only that direction is not the transform forward, but we, but we need to calculate this. First we create a new variable, and this one will be a public float, and this one will be the front sensor angle. And let's default this at around 30. Then we said that the position was the same as the right and the left sensor. So the starting position is the same. So the thing we're going to do is write our right angled sensor between here and the left angled sensor we write beneath here. So in this way we can use the same position and we don't have to calculate it again. So again copy one of those and then write it beneath here. Remove this line because we already have done this and we want to use the same number. So only change this to right, right angle sensor. This is the direction of our vector and we need to calculate this because this is now pointing at the forward position but we, but we need to use our angle. So instead of this we write a new function 
and it's a quaternion dot angle axis and this calculates a quaternion based on a given axis and the rotation so for our example we give it the up axis of a car so it will rotate on the y axis of a car and then the rotation will be our front sensor angle and based on this axis and this angle we can calculate the quaternion that comes out so first we give it the angle and this one will be the front sensor angle and then the axis and this one will be the transform dot up so now that we've calculated the quaternion so the rotation of the axis we need to multiply this by the transform that forward to get the vector 3 of the direction. So this only gives our the rotation and if you multiply this by a transform that forward we get the vector 3 of the direction. Also copy this one for the left angle so write it all the way down and let's say that left and the only thing we need to do here, make the angle negative, so it is pointing the other way. The sensor position is still the same as the left sensor, so we don't have to change that. But the only thing we want to do is rotate it, rotate it the other way. So if we would save the script, and if everything works, we should be able to see it. So let's duplicate this a few times, and we can already see that our side angles are also working. I can see that the sensors are at the bottom of a car and this is because the pivot point of a car is not at the center of a car but at the bottom of a car. And I am noticing this now because the settings of unity were on center and not on pivot. So we also need to increase the height of the sensors so it's at the center of a car. To do this we just change our, our front sensor position to a vector 3. And then instead of just 0 0.5, we write a new vector 3 with 0 on the x, then around 0 0.2 on the y. And here we have our 0 0.5. Then for our calculation, we can just add it to our sensor start position, so we don't have to do it individually for the z, y and x. So remove that and we just add it here, front sensor position. Let's save the script and see if the height is right. And as you can see it's now from the center of a car. So let's check the side once also, just duplicate this. And as you can see they're now pointing from our center of the car. Or at least the center of the front of a car. So here we have our sensors right now. They're not doing anything right now, but they're only storing the hit position, the hit data in the Raycast hit. Before we end this part, we're going to put all the debugs into the function itself, or into the if statement, so that we only see the ray if it actually hits something. So now that we have set up our sensors, I'm going to end this part. And in the next part, we will use those sensors to calculate what direction the car needs to steer. Thanks for watching and I will see you in part 9.